happy day students so let us start today's class which i will start from where we uh, finished yesterday's class in yesterday's class i was speaking about interference okay constructive interference destructive interference and what was sustained interference okay now today we are going to take one case if suppose i say that there is source s1 and there is source s2 okay both are in phase and intensity of both is also same okay now if they are meeting at a point the waves which they are producing is meeting at a point okay since the phase difference is constant and i assume that at this point phase difference is zero and i am going to get constructive interference so what is going to be the intensity of the constructive interference over here let's see i use alternative suppose this is point a then intensity at a is i that's i1 plus i2 or both are i only i1 is also i i2 is also i i1 plus i2 plus 2 root over i1 i2 cos phi now we are saying they are in phase so i am taking it as zero or you can take it as 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi 8 pi like this okay what's coming i plus i plus 2 root over i square that means 2 i and cos i is cos 0 is 1 so what is the maximum intensity we are getting 4 i okay here constructive interference is there so here intensity i am getting 4 i will it be 4 i forever it will not change with time answer is yes why because both are covalent sources okay because both are covalent sources similar way if i take another point maybe that point is b okay and at that point b again they are meeting suppose that point b is somewhere here this is b okay and here delta phi corresponds to destructive interference okay Now, in destructive interference, what is delta phi value? We know that it's pi, three pi, five pi, like that. What will be resultant intensity then? Resultant intensity formula again: I one plus I two plus two root over I one I two cos delta phi. Let's say cos phi. I am keeping over here. Cos phi value is minus one. So what's coming? I plus I. That's two I. You can write plus. 2 root over i square. That's also 2i cos phi value minus 1. So what are we getting? 2i minus 2i equal to 0. So here intensity, the resultant intensity is coming 0. Here resultant intensity is coming 4i. Okay, will it be there uh, forever? Answer is yes because the sources are covalent. Okay, but if suppose we are having non-covalent sources. Okay. Non-covalent sources means their frequency is not same. It keeps on changing. Then what happens? And what will be the average intensity at a meeting point? That is what we are going to discuss right now. Okay. So two sources again, S1 and S2, but their frequencies are different. They are not covalent sources. Now suppose at this point the two waves are meeting. Okay. Let's assume their intensities are same, I and I. Okay. Now here phase difference is not constant. It keeps on changing because of what factor? Omega one minus omega two into t. As I told you in the last class, the phase normally we take as a function of path difference. Okay. But here this factor is also there because omega n, omega omega one and omega two are not equal so here phase difference will be what here phase difference is going to be k delta x plus t into delta omega now this is fixed because their position this is x2 is fixed its position x1 is fixed so this is not going to change but this is going to change and because of this this phase difference keeps on changing from 0 to 2 2 pi how If suppose I say omega one is let's assume it is 60 hertz or 60 radians per second, okay, and omega two let's say is 20 radians per second, okay. So then, if I say omega one minus omega two, that means 40. So it's 
into t. Now, if I say t equal to 0, then what is the value of delta phi here? It's 40. Then t equal to 1, sorry, if t is 0, then delta phi will be 0. If t is 1 second, then delta phi is 40. And if t equal to 9 seconds, then delta phi is going to become 360. So, is it changing? Answer is yes. Okay, it's becoming 0 also, is becoming 360 also, and in between it is going to become 180 degrees also at some point of time. So, phase difference is changing from 0 degrees to pi radian to 2 pi radian. So, here only the intensity sometimes is 0 and sometimes it will be 4i. 4i when? When phase difference will be 0. When 0? When phase difference will be pi. So, what is the average intensity at that point? Average in intensity at this point we call as 2i. Okay? There will be a question based on this in which they will say that there are two non-coherent sources then at a meeting point what will be the average intensity we will write answer as y. Okay? Now let us solve some questions based on interference. So, let us see first questions. We will clarify many uh, confusing points to numericals only. So, let us see. So, two sound sources are given. Let us say this is S1 and this is S2. And this is the point where the sound from both the sources is moving. I said this is 1 meter, this is 2 meter, and this is 4 meter. Okay. Speed of sound is given 350 meter per second. Alright. So, what is the question asking? The question is asking for what frequencies? what frequencies does constructive interference so does constructive interference takes place at p so what we want over here constructive interference okay so first thing is are the coherent sources so yes both these are coherent sources s1 and S2 are coherent sources. Then only we can say that that constructive interference is happening at P and it will remain so. Then only it will be a sustained interference. Okay. So we want constructive interference over here. Now what is the condition for constructive interference? The condition is the phase difference between the two waves which is reaching from two sources should be 0 or 2 pi or 5 pi or sorry 4 pi or 6 pi okay if you want constructive interference then phase difference need to be this for which sources coherent sources that's also okay but now if i want to know path difference because i know that delta phi actually is a function of path difference if the two sources are coherent so for constructive interference what should be delta x 0 lambda 2 lambda, 3 lambda likewise. Okay. So, now what we are going to do because the condition is here constructive interference, let us join. This is how the sound is, sound is going to move from S1 to P and from here also the sound is going to move like this. So, how much distance is this traveling that we have to find? Now, we can see through the diagram, this is if I consider this as a right angle triangle, then this is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So, what is this distance? It is actually 4 square plus 2 square. That means how much? Root over 20. Okay. Same way, let us find out this one also. This is 4 square. This, this is 4 and this is 1. That means root over 4 square plus 1 square. So, root over 4 square plus 1 square means what? 16 plus 1, 17. That is root 17. Okay. Now, delta x which will be S2P minus S1. Okay. S2P minus S1P. So, how much is that? S2P, if I see, I am getting it as root 20. I am writing root 20. And this one is root 17. Okay. 
but if I want here constructive interference, then this should be equal to what? N lambda. What can be N? 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, I am writing this as N lambda. N lambda equal to root over 20 minus root over 17. This lambda, we can convert in terms of frequency because we know that this lambda can be written as speed by frequency. Okay. From which formula? Speed equal to frequency into wavelength. So, lambda equal to speed by frequency. Write it over here. Speed by frequency. Root 20 minus root 17. Okay. Speed is given to us, which is 350. Okay. So, speed is given to us. Let's put it. N 350 by F equal to root 20 minus root 7. Now the question is what we want, what frequencies, that means we can change this n, okay, and find f. So first of all let us find the formula for f, then we will keep on changing n. So f is equal to 350n by root 20 minus root 7. So first n we can value we can write as 1, then we can write as 2, then we can write as 3, 4, 5, 6 and we will be getting many frequencies for which we are going to get here constructive interference. Okay. Same way, if the same question is asked from us that we want destructive interference at P, then what is the condition we are going to use for destructive interference? Also, we will see. Okay. So, as far as path difference is concerned, path difference is this only, S1 P minus S2 P. But what is the condition for destructive interference? Condition for destructive interference is destructive interference delta phi should be either pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, or 7 pi. Then we are going to get destructive interference again for coherent sources. Okay. Same way delta x correspondingly we find and delta x corresponding lambda by 2, 3 lambda by 2. 5 lambda by 2 and so on. Okay. So, what shall we write over here? And here we are going to write it as 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Why 2n plus 1 lambda by 2? So, that n you can write 0. If you are putting n is 0, it comes lambda by 2. If you are going to put n as 1, this is going to be 3 lambda by 2. If you put n equal to 2, it is 5 lambda by 2. Okay, so that is why we have written it as 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. You can also write 2n minus 1 lambda by 2, but in that case n will start from 1. Then also we can do. Okay, it is your wish. Here also I will do both. Okay, first of all 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. In place of lambda by 2, what we can do? Or in place of lambda rather, what we can do? We can write v by f. Okay, now what we want? We want frequencies. So put the frequencies here. Convert this form into frequency. So frequency we can write as 2n plus 1 v, 2n plus 1 v by 2 into root 20 minus root 7. Okay. So first we are going to put here n equal to 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and like this. We will be getting frequencies. Okay. But if suppose here I am going to put 2n minus 1, in that case n will start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, same answer is going to be. Okay? So this is how the question is done based on interference superposition for destructive and constructive interference. Let us see another question. Okay, the other question is something like this. There is a source 1 here, source 2 over here, okay, and this distance is taken as d. This distance between two sources is 2 lambda, okay, and there is a point O and here is a point P. And this is separation y. Okay. 
So question says there are two coherent sources S1 and S2 are two coherent sources. They are coherent sources. Okay, emitting sound of wavelength lambda. So wavelength of sound produced is lambda. Okay, they are in the same phase and placed parallel to each other at a small separation of two lambda. The sound is detected by moving a detector on the screen. Now this is a screen. And on this one, one detector is moving. The so sound is detected by moving a detector on the screen at a distance d. Okay, and this distance d is very very large as compared to wavelength lambda, or d is very very large as compared to two lambda also. Okay, find the distance y. Such that the intensity at P is equal to intensity at O, so that intensity at P and intensity at O is equal. Okay, so let's first of all discuss what is the intensity at O. Okay, sources are coherent; they are in same phase. So first of all, if you are looking at point O, we will first of all find out what is the path difference. So how much is the distance moved by the wave which is coming from S1 to reach at O? Let's say D. Okay, S one O. How much is that? D. S two O is how much? D minus two lambda. What is path difference between the two? S one O minus S two O. How much is that? Say two lambda. Delta x is two lambda. Now when delta x is two lambda, it's a condition of constructive interference or destructive interference? Constructive. That means here I am going to get maximum intensity. If both are going to have intensity i and i, I am going to get here 4i. So here is constructive interference. Now this question says how much is this y? So that at p also we are going to get constructive interference. What to do? Let's join this. Let's join this also. Okay. Now what? Since we want constructive interference at p. Then, what should be the path difference? Say S1 P minus S2 P is definitely whole number multiple of lambda. Okay, because here it is two lambda. We got two lambda over here. If you are going upwards over here, can we say that the path difference actually is increasing? Correct or not? Path difference has to increase. So here the path difference will be more than two lambda. Maybe three lambda, maybe four lambda, but it will be more than two lambda. So I am writing over here. Let's say it's three lambda. Okay. Now how to calculate how much is S two P and how much is sorry S two P and what is S one P? Let's see then how to do these kind of questions. It's already given to you. D is very large as compared to lambda. So in these kind of questions, when it is given that the two sources are very close to each other. And the point from which we are finding it out or seeing it is very far. Suppose one source is here, I have made another source here, I am making. Okay, and we are going to observe from very large distance, something like this from here. If I am going to join with a line, this is, this is S1 and this is S2. So if I make a line and join P, okay, and from S2 also, if I make a line and join P. How they are appearing to us? They are appearing to us as if they are parallel to each other. Are you able to understand? How they are appearing to us? They are parallel because the angle they are making over here is close to zero. Why it's happening? Because these two are very close to each other, and we are seeing it from very far. Again, listen clearly. When the two points are very close to each other, and we are seeing from very far, they make very small angle at our eye. And it appears to us as if they are parallel. A very similar example is if suppose two stars we are we are seeing in the sky, and the light is coming to us from those sky, it appears parallel. Okay, the reason is why? The reason is because the distance between stars and us is infinite. So very very far from the stars. So that's why the angle that is made made by the two stars, which appears to us very close. 
is zero on our right. So the light comes from those stars appears to us as parallel. So same thing is going to happen here also because this D is a large, a very large as compared to lambda. So these two, when you are going to see from P, it will appear that this S two P and S one P are actually what parallel, just like this. Okay, both are what parallel to each other. Now from this diagram we can clearly see S one P is greater than S two P. It's visible. But how much greater? That we have to find. So what is the method? Method is from this point you drop a perpendicular on this. Okay, we know already that this angle is almost zero. This angle is almost zero angle. So now, if I say that this point is M, then I can say that now S two P and M P are equal. Okay, what is equal? S two P and M P are equal. Why? Because they are making zero angle over here, and from S2 we have dropped a perpendicular. So now this and this distance become equal. So I am writing it: MP is equal to S2. Okay. So then, if I have to find path difference between the two, which is actually S1P minus S2P, I can say it is actually equal to S1M. It is actually equal to S1M. Okay. Now. If I assume that this angle is theta, then I can write what is S1M value. I can say 2 lambda cos theta. Okay, 2 lambda cos theta is the path difference or delta x. All right, 2 lambda cos theta. Now, one more thing I can do in this particular uh, uh, triangle, but this time triangle I am not taking. This small triangle. I'm taking triangle S1PO. You can see this bigger triangle. In triangle S1PO, in that triangle, I can write tan theta equal to y by d. Okay, tan theta is equal to y by d. Correct. Now let's see further. This this thing only. Now, in this particular question, it was told to us that we want here also what constructive interference. Here, you want maximum intensity because at O also we got maximum intensity. So, for getting maximum intensity, delta x should be what? Delta x should be according to condition lambda, two lambda, three lambda, or zero. A four lambda like that. Okay, so if we do that, the equate delta x. If we say zero, okay. If we say zero, theta will become ninety. All right, which is not possible. If we say here lambda, delta x equal to two lambda cos theta. If I say this is lambda, okay, then this lambda lambda gets cancelled. This is one by two. And theta comes out to be 60 degrees. Theta comes out to be 60 degrees. Now this theta I'm going to keep over here. So tan 60. Now tan 60 means root 3 equal to y by d. So y will come root 3d. Okay. Next thing what we can do? If suppose I'm not keeping here lambda, and instead I'm keeping 2 lambda over here. If 2 lambda, 2 lambda gets cancelled. First theta will come 1. Okay, cos theta will come one. That means theta is zero. So theta is zero means we will come over here only. Okay, let's go to another point. The three lambda if you are keeping, it will become three by two. So cos theta three by two, which is not possible. Okay, cos theta three by two is not possible. So only value possible in this case is lambda, which we have kept over here. So in this particular question. Our answer is coming. Y value is root 3d, and at this value, we are going to get here same intensity as we are going to get at O point. Okay, here three lambda keeping is not possible. Why? Because theta is not possible. Cos theta cannot be more than one. Maximum value of cos theta is one only. So only possible value is lambda. We check zero lambda to lambda. Okay. Let's see now the next question then. The 
similar concept the two sources here s1 and s2 again coherent sources which are kept 1 meter above and 1 meter down from the origin o and this is a screen and on this screen one listener is moving which is observing the sound because of the two sources ok the distance is very large between the two sources and the screen this distance is very large ok and the frequency of the two sources is 600 hertz both are coherent so frequency is 600 speed of sound is 340 meter per second so what we have to do in this at what angle theta will listener hear first the minimum sound from this point ok where the listener if it is starting from here where it is going to get the first minimum now minimum means destructive interference destructive interference means zero intensity so what should be the phase difference for destructive interference pi 3 pi 5 pi 7 pi and what should be the path difference lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda by 2 ok so first of all what it is getting here that we have to check at m what it is getting see if we join this point this is how the sound wave will move to meet at m so you can see that s1 m and s2 m are exactly equal ok so path difference that means s1 m minus s2 m is 0 ok when path difference is 0 phase difference is also 0 that means what are we getting over here we are getting a constructive interference maximum intensity so at m we are getting maximum intensity now at some other point let us say p point over here we are saying here it is going to get the destructive interference for the first time ok so from the diagram we can see that the two waves are starting from s1 and s2 and they are reaching p now it is clearly visible who is travelling more s2 p is more so delta x I will write s2 p minus s1 and again like last question this distance is very large as compared to this distance so what p will feel the rays which are coming to p are actually parallel so how to find what is the path difference drop a perpendicular from s1 to s2 say this is theta ok then join from the middle also you join a line like that ok now you know that already we know s2 p is actually parallel to s1 ok this one and this one are parallel ok so if this is theta this is 90 then this is 90 minus theta ok so it means with the horizontal what this angle will be there theta and this is also theta so if this is theta this will also become theta ok why this theta is required so that we can calculate this y value ok see again now this is the path difference between the two I am going to say this point is uh, maybe as n ok so s2 p minus s1 p I am going to write as s2 n what that is now now you can see that this is 90 degree this is hypotenuse of the triangle ok so this is 2 so what is this distance it will be 2 sin theta this is 2 sin theta ok delta x value here is 2 sin theta but what we want we want here destructive interference that means delta x should be lambda by 2 so lambda by 2 equal to 2 sin theta that means sin theta equal to what lambda by 4 ok sin theta value is lambda by 4 now see this triangle what is this this is 10 theta equal to y by x this is x value which is very large ok this is x 
So we are going to write now tan theta equal to y by x. Tan theta equal to y by x. Now if sin theta is lambda by 4, I can calculate tan theta value also. Okay, what will be tan theta then? Tan theta we can say is lambda by lambda by 4 square minus lambda square square root equal to y by x. Okay, now this lambda value also I can calculate because frequency and wavelength both given to me. Now lambda is v by f. So that means 340 by 600. This gets cancelled here. Further, this is 17 by 30. So lambda value also I know. Where it is? Here. So I will put it over here. So y value will come x lambda by 4 square minus 17 by 30. 17 by 30 square. square and again lambda value we can keep 17 value. So this way we can calculate y value. If suppose in the same way you ask us when is going to get the first maximum after that then again we will be calculating the path difference and here in place of delta x we will be putting lambda to calculate that value of y1. Okay. So where is the change we are going to bring? If it is a constructive interference then the path difference will be multiple of lambda and if it is destructive interference then it will be odd number multiple of lambda by 2. How to calculate path difference? This is the way that I told you. If the two sources are very close and you are watching from very far then the two rays which are coming are parallel to each other. Then from the smaller one drop a perpendicular onto the larger one, take the angle and then find the path difference in terms of angle and then take 10 theta over here and find out the position of that particular part. Okay, so that's it for now. The remaining we will see in the next class.